Looking for some fun Halloween STEM activities to try? I've got you covered. These are perfect for class parties, one day challenges, and class rewards. Let's jump into these spooktacular activities. To help me get in the mood for this episode, I wore my jack-o'-lantern shirt. And let me tell you, I am definitely a STEM teacher, elementary teacher at heart. My teacher, Honey, and I aren't the same age. He's older than me. And I tell him when it's Halloween time, I need to have my millennial moment and get in the mood and dress up, which makes it even more fun because we have our little dog, Frederick. And Frederick and I do the couple costumes. My teacher, Honey, he doesn't do any of that. My first year when I got Frederick, I was an astronaut and Frederick was my little rocket and I made him a little rocket pack out of water bottles that I painted with silver paint and used tissue paper for the flame. So super cute. I had that picture hung up on my wall for a long time and the younger students kept asking me if I was a real astronaut and they totally believed me that I was even though I'm holding my dog in the picture and depending on the, what mood I was in, I would tell them, yes, I am and that's why I'm a teacher. But no, no, I'm really not a real astronaut, but it was a fun costume. The second Halloween with Frederick, I was Miss Frizzle and he was my little lizard. And of course, I wore that outfit to school didn't bring Frederick along, but when I brought him to doggy daycare and picked him up that afternoon, he actually won the costume contest, which I didn't even know it was a contest. I just wanted to dress up. So that was super fun. And then this year I am going to dress as a Starbucks barista and he is going to be my little puppuccino. <laughs> so poor little Freddie Fred has to dress up with me and my teacher honey is off the hook. So of course, I'm very excited about this episode because I have five Halloween STEM activities for you to try, and I think that you and your students are really going to love them. They aren't tied to Halloween specifically, so if your school or classroom doesn't celebrate Halloween, you can still do these in your classroom. They have a spooky twist, but they're not necessarily, let's celebrate Halloween together. So you can still implement these in your classroom no matter what your school or classroom celebrates. Also, if you're looking for more activities, I have five different STEM challenges that I talk about in episode 23, and they are all about fall. So you could do all of these Halloween themed ones and all of the fall ones and just have a fun STEM themed classroom experience. The first Halloween STEM activity to try is Monster Mouths. A lot of times when I am getting inspiration for my holiday themed STEM activities, I like to browse the Dollar Tree and the Target Dollar section to help me give ideas. Also, it's a good excuse for me to buy some things, so that's pretty fun too. For this challenge, you will need those plastic vampire mouths, googly eyes, and Lego bricks. You can definitely tie in a monster theme story. One of my favorites is I Need a Monster and the book itself is so cute, but there also is an adorable little animation of the story that I will embed in the show notes that you should definitely watch with your class. It's a little spooky at first, but then it's just a happy, cute ending. So I've even showed it with kindergarten and they're a little bit scared at first and then they're okay. So after reading this story, you can have students create their own monster. You can have them start building right away or they can plan their design. And the creations are absolutely hilarious what they come up with. What makes this quite a challenge is they can't use any tape to tape on the mouth monster mouth. They actually have to engineer a way for the teeth to be held by the Lego bricks. Students have such creative ideas, and it is so fun to take pictures of their creations and send those out to families in Seesaw, Flipgrid, or whatever platform that you use. If you only have a small class of kids, you can let them keep those little vampire teeth. Or like me, when I teach all the students in the school, I do have to take them back. I will say I have had some kids walk off with them, and that's pretty disgusting because they have been used a lot of times. But this is a fun monster theme challenge to try. The second Halloween STEM activity to try is jack-o'-lantern coding. Back in that fall episode, I talk about the importance of having a grid for students to code their robot to. So make sure to go and listen to that part. But for this one, you will want to have a grid for your specific robots 
and have a dice that have different faces of jack-o'-lanterns on them and different sizes of pumpkins. Likewise, those same images you can have printed out on cards that are mixed up and spread all along the grid. Students will roll one of each dice, so one dice with the jack-o'-lantern face and one dice with the pumpkin size. In turn, they will code their robot to collect the jack-o'-lantern face that will go on the corresponding pumpkin size. If you want to make this even more hands-on, instead of having cards, you could have felt pumpkins that you could cut out on a Cricut machine or even by hand and different jack-o'-lantern faces that you could cut out. And those could be lining the border of your coding mat. And when students code to those different sections, they can actually build the physical jack-o'-lantern. So there's a lot of variations to this. You can have a lot of fun with it and have a different building experience when it comes to coding. The third Halloween STEM activity to try is spider pulleys. Again, this is another low prep one, but the kids absolutely love it. After talking about the science of pulleys and different pulleys out there, students can create their own pulley system that will help pull the spider up to their web. For this challenge, all you will need are those cute little spider rings that you know as a kid you would put one of every finger and think you're beautiful. I'm not saying that I did that. <laughs> wink, wink. But you have those spider rings, you have yarn, you have pencils, and you tie a long piece of string on those rings and onto the pencils. I recommend doing this ahead of time so they're ready to go. This is a big challenge for a lot of kids to make those tiny knots, so just go ahead and tie those before you start the challenge. And then you have tiny spider webs printed out on paper and Lego bricks, or you can even use makerspace items as well. Students will create a system where the pulley can be in their design and be steady, and while they turn the pulley, the spider can go up the web. Again, you could send kids on their way with these rings or keep them for a lot of different classes. The fourth Halloween STEM challenge to try is slime explorations. I know a lot of teachers and parents have their different opinions when it comes to slime. But I recommend if you can, if the weather is nice enough, do this outside. It's a great way to explore the outdoors with this messy experiment. This is also a great lesson on matter and all the three states of matter and how slime doesn't always follow the rules of solids, liquids, and gases, but is more of a non-Newtonian fluid. So you could talk about all of that science with students. And this is also a great way to try different recipes and students can compare the different types of slime and what they can and can't do. For example, some of the things you can have students observe are which one was the stickiest, which one was the smoothest, the most gooey, the most bouncy, and the most stretchy. My favorite slime out there uses baking soda, glue, and contact solution. You can just Google it and find the recipe. A way to make this even spookier is you can actually buy glue that glows in the dark. I know that it glows in black light. I'm not 100% sure if it glows in just a dark room. Test it out. They make big old jugs of it and it's sparkly and so much fun. Another thing too with slime, have some gloves on hand for students who have sensory needs. Not all kids like the sensation of slime. So having those available are just a great backup for students who still want to experiment this fun challenge, but they don't necessarily want their hands in contact with the slime. The fifth Halloween STEM challenge to try is there was an old lady who swallowed a bat. And I actually have four station ideas that you can use in your classroom. This will actually get two days of planning done for you if you do two stations a day. After you read the story or listen to an audio version, you can try these different challenges. Now, most kids think this book is really funny. I had a kindergarten class one year had the weirdest reactions. They kept saying, ew, this is gross, or oh, what's wrong with her? So that kindergarten class wasn't a huge fan. Most classes just laugh and think it's funny, but this class had a totally different response. So read that story and have the different things that the old lady swallows and pictures of those things. They could be real or clip art versions. And here are the four different stations that you can use that go along with this story. The first one is students can use Lego bricks or whatever type of blocks that you have, and they can build the different items that the old lady eats 
and then have an old lady face and they can feed her all of those different items in order that it happens of the story. This is really good for beginning, middle and end, paying attention to details and having the sequential steps of a story. So you're tying in those ELA standards. The second station, you can add in some robotic coding and you have the different pictures of those things that the old lady ate and students can code to those different items in the story in order that they happened. The third station that you can have is students can create pixel images of those things that the old lady ate. My favorite way for kids to create pixel art is using the boards that are from the Bloxels kit. Bloxels actually has a paid subscription where students can use the images that they create on the board and then put it into a game that they can create. I actually don't buy the subscription. I just really like the boards and the kids love the little pieces. It's great for fine motor skills and being able to see a big picture and break it apart into sections. The fourth station that you can have that will go along with the story is students can build the different items that the old lady ate using digital blocks that are in Seesaw, or ones that you can create in Google Slides, and you can even have students graph the amount of different blocks that they use. For example, if they create a bat using specific pattern blocks, they can graph how many of each type of block that they used in their design. So you are adding in that math piece. As a recap, here are the five Halloween STEM activities that you can try in your classroom. First are Monster Mouth, second, jack-o'-lantern robot coding, third, spider pulleys, fourth, slime explorations, fifth, there was an old lady who swallowed a bat stem stations. Thank you so much for being here and have a happy Halloween.